Okay, I'm going to call the meeting to order. It is uh, 401, November 28th, 2016. <laughs> Roll call, please. Mayor Crawford? Here. Commissioner Blanchard? Here. Commissioner Davis? Here. Commissioner Hardy? Here. Commissioner Ryan? Here. Okay, if you'll all join us, please, in the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Citizens forums, an opportunity for anyone to come up and speak regarding an item that is not on the agenda. Just give your name and address. Limit your comments to five minutes. Okay. No one wants to come up and speak. Okay. Number five, public hearings. An item scheduled for a certain time. Item 5.1, public hearing and report on petition number 4384, requesting vacation of a 46-foot portion of a 20-foot east-west utility easement located on Lot 1, Block 1 of the Whittier School addition to the City of Salina, Saline County, Kansas, 5.1A, first reading ordinance number 16-10869. Okay, I'm going to open the public... Um, Public hearing. Mr. Andrew. Thank you, Mayor and Commissioners. This is a vacation petition that was filed by USD number 305 Board of Education, and the request is to vacate a portion of an existing 20 foot utility easement that's located on the Cottonwood School campus. And the Cottonwood School is located on the south side of Walnut between Baker and Phillips. And it's one of our newer schools in, in the community, having been constructed in 2000 to take the place of the uh, former Whittier School, which was located on the south portion of this block. As part of the uh, project that was done in 2000, there was a conditional use permit approved for a new school building. There was also a replat of the property, and you're looking at the replat. Uh, today, the highlighted item you see there is the 20-foot utility easement that bisects this property. And um, as part of the construction of the school, the utilities in the surrounding area were looked at, and they were both uh, fairly old and undersized. And so a brand-new 6-inch water line was constructed here in this easement to serve the new school building. And also there was a new 6-inch line installed in Baker Street uh, to provide water supply and fire protection to the school. Um, as part of current improvements going on, there was a 9,500 9, square foot addition placed on the school building, and uh, there was a drop-off area on the east side of the school over here, or a parking lot, and that parking lot was removed and turned into a circular drop-off area, and so to make up for that, these three houses still show up on this aerial photo, but they are no longer there. They were purchased and removed by the school district, and a satellite parking lot was constructed in that location to serve the school. Um, as part of the improvements to the school campus, there was a plan for a storage shed in this Location, a 14 by 22 shed, and in reviewing those plans, the Planning and Utilities Department determined that, as proposed, the shed would be built over an existing public utility easement, which contains a 6-inch public water line. If you could go on, John, to the depiction of that. This is probably the best drawing that depicts the situation. This is the school building over here. This is a storage shed here. This is a six-inch water line that bisects the block and serves the school building. And so having identified that 
as a issue of concern. The school district essentially had three options. One was to relocate this shed out of the easement. The other option was to file a petition to vacate the easement, to relocate the six inch water line, and to uh, dedicate a new easement for the new alignment. Or the third option would been to have requested authorization from the city commission to construct the building over the water line and in the easement. Uh, because the school district indicated they did not want to relocate this storage building, this petition has been filed and the option they have chosen is to relocate the water line as proposed. So the existing alignment is here. The proposal would be to relocate that line around and to do that they would like the petition you have in front of you is to vacate 46 feet of that easement through here. Um, if that request is approved, then once the water line was relocated, we would work with them to dedicate a new easement in its place. Uh, we have contacted local utility providers and no one besides the city of Salina has utilities in this easement. A&T and T is not positive uh, whether their fiber is in the easement area, but they basically had a note that says if it is found to be in the easement area, then the school district will be responsible for relocating their lines to the new easement at the school district's expense. Um, obviously, we have these easements in place to protect utility lines installed by public and franchise utilities. If the uh, plan for relocation is approved, then this little segment here would no longer serve a public purpose. So in terms of action today, uh, we have identified two options. One, you could approve the petition as submitted and order that this segment of utility easement be vacated. This would be carried out by approval of ordinance number 16-10869 on first reading. Or you could to decline to approve the vacation petition and then provide staff and the school district with further direction. So with that, we'd be open to any questions that you have. We also have representatives of the school district here if you have questions of them. I have a question on the utility, on the utility relocation. Is that, whose expense is that being done? That would be at, at the expense of the property owner to relocate the utility line. Okay, cause, and that is the city of Salina water line? Yes, it's the city of Salina water line that was installed in 2000 as part of the school project. Okay, uh, just a quick question because in your blue sheet you have here that says, um, part of the ordinance says that uh, no building or structure nor any additional addition thereto shall be constructed or placed within <laughs> platted unless expressly authorized by the Board of Commissioners. Do we have other instances in the city where a storage shed goes over a publicly platted I can't, utility? there have been cases that have come before the commission to locate buildings and easements. There's only two that I'm aware of. One was the Sonic drive-in on South Santa Fe, which they rebuilt, and there was a 100-year-old sewer line that went through there, and they encased it, and they built over that sewer line. And then the other case I'm aware of is Maori clinic, which is essentially the same situation where there was an old sewer line there and portions of the Maori clinic were built over that. But in terms of sheds or residential structures, there have been some requests made, but there's not been any requests approved, to my knowledge, to put a structure in the uh, easement through the city commission's authority. Okay. Uh, were, th were they discouraged from pursuing that or did they did, did they just decide on their own that? Um, to, to I would say that, um, and I'll let Ms. Tasker speak to that, but our position was that city staff was not supportive of authorizing the shed to be constructed over the water line, both from a getting access standpoint and also from a precedent standpoint. So that does remain as an option. You do have the authority to authorize that shed to be built over the water line, but we reported to the 
school district that staff was not supportive of that option. Okay. I, I appreciate that. That's all I needed. Okay, any other questions? So if not, we do have representatives from the school district here if you have questions of them. Any public comment? Anyone from the school district? Okay, I'll close the public hearing. Entertain a motion and a second. I move that we approve ordinance number 16-10869 on first reading. Second. second. Okay, there's a motion and a second to um, approve on first reading ordinance number 1610869. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay. Move on to the consent agenda. Item 6.1, approve the minutes of November 21st, 2016. Item 6.2, approve the purchase of fire hydrants, project number 63164 from Wichita Wind Water in the amount of $55,784. Item 6.3, approve resolution number 16-7411, authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement for the replacement of Salinas community-wide outdoor siren warning system with federal signal safety and security systems in the amount of $200,257.10. And item 6.4, approve resolution number 16-7413, to authorize the approved artistic design and notification to proceed to the art fabricator for the Salina Fieldhouse. Okay, is there any, any item a commissioner wants to uh, remove? Item 6.4, please. Okay, item 6.4. Uh, is there a motion to approve the 6.1, 6.2, 6.3? So moved. Second. <coughs> been moved and seconded to approve under consent agenda items 6.1, 6.2, and 6.3. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Same sign. Okay, motion carried. Let's go back to item 6.3. Just a uh, question, a, a, a citizen uh, sent a letter asking Specifically uh, about two things. One, uh, the durability of the design material. Uh, she thought it might be, I'm assuming, somewhat thin to withstand the rigors of the hot summers and cold winters. And just wanted to know if, I, I thought you'd addressed it during the study session, but if, if there was any comment to assure her that I'm this gonna, is a durable structure. I'm going <laughs> to lean towards Grace um, as I uh, answer this. It is uh, made out of a, a stainless steel that has been, uh, it's a brushed stainless steel surface that is uh, both uh, not uh, uh, subject to rust and has been fully designed and engineered uh, to meet uh, construction and, and Kansas wind and weather standards uh, for this project. Um, I think it, uh, by by all rights, the the material uh, it's not a flimsy material. It it is a it's a rigid material. It's yeah, I'm not sure what age. The you, you'll have to come. Up. know that it's in the proposal <coughs> from Zayner, um, but it's it's specifically designed for outdoor applications. So, and they Zayner does those those panels all over the world. So they uh, fully engineered the superstructure that those panels will be attached to as well as the panels. All right, thank you. And, and the, the other question Susan raised was regarding the use of solar uh, powered lighting uh, to illuminate. Uh, that the lighting was um, written into uh, the contract or not or the construction the construction contract with the by the architect so that was not something that we ever actually discussed so i don't know um how we can specifically address that if that's something that we can look into and, and i'm not sure whether not. citizens concern was powering just the lighting for the the art 
project or They'd even more of the, the premises? There are LED lights. The, the LED lights that are going on the, or for the exterior or scoped in, it was probably a cost consideration as much as anything, uh, adding uh, both the fixtures and uh, solar capabilities at, at that location would have raised the cost significantly. And the LEDs are a relatively uh, uh, efficient light source as we've just made the change downtown to LEDs. So it's consistent with the energy consumption of the other. Uh, uh, of, of the other fixtures that we're currently using. So. All right. Thank I you. also remember visiting with the artist at the time about, you know, worrying about the wind, and and then he passed around a portion of that, which is very sturdy. So I'm not worried about that personally now. When it comes to the maintenance on on this, that and, and it's and I'm assuming that any periodic maintenance is probably going to involve the lighting portion of that will that be will that come out of and be performed by public works or will or is that somehow I mean how do we do that now like at the water plant if some of that neons I noticed a couple of those neons out over there the green lights sometimes on the overpass from time to time will do, do, does public works do that and also cover and is the budget does it come out of their budget or where does that where does that come from I, I that's a good question I uh, I would imagine <coughs> Those bulbs are coming out of the public works budget. Uh, if not, what we like to do is, is we have the maintenance, we need to have maintenance plans, and then we have, need to have coordination, depending on what the artistic work is, because you don't want to mess with the integrity of that work. Right. So there's obviously direct coordination with Arts and Humanities and Grace uh, on that. I don't know on that particular project if they're just basically replacing bulbs or some painting. I assume there's coordination, but I think it's out of their budget, I would guess. Actually, we, we have... Um uh, in working on this project, met um, uh, Zaner has a, a an offshoot of their company company called Meta Labs, and what they do is they assess sculpture um, through munis for municipalities uh, through this particular section of their um, company, and they come out and they did an assessment recently for free of all of our large CIP projects uh, that involve metal. Um, and the, the water treatment plant was one that was assessed and will be addressed. They're going to come back in January and do a uh, formal, former proposal. They um, recommend what to do. They don't necessarily, um, we don't, we haven't contracted with them, but they, they've assessed all of our major pieces and are going to give us recommendations on what to do. Um, as far as the budgeting, I'm, I'm not sure where that I can as, as our collection has grown over the last decade, um, that's an item that is likely to come forward in future budget requests. Um, we're going to rely on Metal Labs and Zaner to help give us a, 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 a range that we could come back to the budgeting process uh, and, and ask for to help with ongoing and regular care and maintenance. To answer your question specifically, the stainless steel or like the South Salina piece, um, those are by kind of an annual observation and when necessary or if there was excessive road salts or or dirt or uh, you know wind and mud that yeah. that ended up on a piece or whatever the the uh, steel structures and some aluminum ask for an annual or maybe every two year washing just a mild soap and water similar thing with some of the bronze work but then bronzes and others have a different cleaning structure mm -hmm. we're just now gonna and with Grace's help and Zayner's help um, I think they'll have some guidance guidelines for us to be able to follow. Then who does that um, when we had uh, um, the uh, crisscrossing lights on North 9th uh, um, that were hit by a driver leaving a parking lot a year and a half ago? Um, our public works department had uh, the specifications, had the, the, the information, had the contacts. They contacted us and we documented it, talked to the artist. And then in that case, they took care of all of the outfitting again of, of those poles as they were replaced uh, and, and reinstalled. So each piece is a little bit unique. Right. I'm, I'm glad that's being addressed because whether or not you're for it or opposed to the artwork, we can all agree that it looks a lot better when it's working. 
Absolutely. And, and, it, and, it, and it really does. And so I look, I look forward to that, and I think that probably these stainless steel ones, and like the one at the uh, Bicentennial Center and this and so on, our uh, Don Silver lining kind of tend to, I think, require less. As, as part of each piece, one of our office's responsibilities and what you're agreeing to, um, uh, we, we make as part of the policy to get annual care and maintenance and cleaning instructions and those kinds of things from, uh, from the artist uh, so that we have the best information possible to be able to build from. So uh, having that information from them and then an external party assessing uh, the current condition of our pieces, I think is going to be very helpful to be able to make an informed and responsible care and maintenance decision. So. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other questions or anything? No. Okay. Then we no, need I a just motion. Wanna, I want to note, note for Jason that the rest needs to be removed from the sculpture up north. The. <laughs> <laughs> that looks really good up there, by the way. That does look very really good, good up very there. Very good. That That's one really we can leave. So the other day. <laughs> <laughs> we can leave the rust on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Uh, we, we need a motion on 6.4 now. Yeah. Madam Mayor, move uh, approval of resolution number 16-7413 to authorize the approved artistic design and notification to proceed to the art fabricator for the Salina Fieldhouse. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second to approve resolution number 16-7413. All in favor say aye. 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 And those opposed, mm -hmm. same sign. Motion carries. Development business. <laughs> Item 8.1, first reading ordinance number 16-10870, requesting annexation of the Riverwoods natural area located east of the flood control levee south of Cloud Street. Mr. Andrew. Those of you who uh, we could zoom this out, but uh, as a point of reference on this aerial photo, this is Cloud Street where it terminates at the flood control levee. This is the Red Fox Lane area here. This is Golden Eagle Estates or the Wildcat Circle area and the flood control levee, the river. This is River Run addition over here. The area that we are talking about is an area in this area that was owned by the city of Salina was conveyed in 1976 to USD number 305 for a outdoor learning laboratory as part of a larger property exchange between USD 305 and the city. The property was deeded back to the city of Salina in 2013. As you can see from the aerial photo, this site is not accessible by motor vehicle. There is a parking area right here at the end of the levee. You can park there and, and walk to there or you can ride your bike there on the levee. And within the Riverwoods area is, is trails that are used by mountain bikers and walkers. Um, the City Parks and Recreation Department has installed uh, a sign or posted some signs on the property and they have installed trails. Um, it is commonly referred to as the River Woods area, just so um, there's a point of reference, but it has not gone through a formal facility naming process um, as some of our other parks and recreation facilities have. This property is subject to a, a deed covenant, and that covenant states that it shall be used as an environmental laboratory for the benefits of the city citizens and citizens of Sling County as well as students, staff, and patrons of USD 305. If it ceases to be used for that purpose, then it would be uh, ownership would transfer to the Nature Conservancy. So this is actively used as a um, environmental open space and also for multi-use trails. Um, the Red Fox area here was annexed in 1976. The city annexed the levee in this area in 1979. Uh, however, this area here was not annexed as part of anything here or as part of the River Run annexation in 2003. This property is in the floodway for the Smoky Hill River and is shown as a conservation area on the comprehensive plan. 
This is city owned property and you as the governing body have the statutory authority to annex it without any special notice or public hearing or resolution. Um, staff believes that annexing this property would eliminate any confusion about law enforcement jurisdiction, emergency response, um, would also make the city's animal control ordinance applicable to this property. To the best of our knowledge, this is the only city recreation area that's not within the city limits. So as we approach the end of 2016, it seemed like a good idea to get this within the city limits as part of our city boundary resolution. So the attached ordinance number 1610870 uh, would annex this property on first reading with second reading scheduled for your uh, December 5th meeting. With that, I'd be open to any questions you might have about the property or the annexation process. Okay. Any questions? Just, what, is there any downside to annexing it? Can't think of any downside of annexing it. It's, it's city owned and controlled, but in order to enforce our ordinances and to be clear about who's responsible for responding, um, in the case of a, a 911 call, it seemed like it would be best to be under the city's annexation authority as well as its ownership. So. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, any public comment? Okay. I request a motion and a second. I move we approve ordinance number 1610870. Second. A motion and a second to approve ordinance number 16-10870. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Same sign. Okay. We'll move to other business. There is a request for an executive session, but I don't know for what time period. Oh, say an <laughs> hour to start with. All right. <laughs> Madam Mayor, move to uh, recess into executive session for 60 minutes to discuss with legal counsel matters subject to the attorney client privilege for the reason that public discussion of those matters would waive the privilege and adversely affect the city's interest in the matters and reconvene at 5.30 p.m. Second. I have a motion and a second to uh, Request for executive session until 5.30. Is there any other business? Will there be any? No, we don't, do any not expect to come back out business? to take okay. any action. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Adjourned.